Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be delving into an aspect of the history of photography. More specifically, this is going to be the first of a two-part series on the history of spirit photography in the United States. What is spirit photography? Well, spirit photography is the photographing of ghosts and spirits from the beyond. Now, no history of spirit photography is complete without some background and looking back at the history of spiritualism in America. Now, people have believed in ghosts and spirits for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But modern spiritualism in the United States began on March 31st, 1848 in the town of Hydesville, New York. Let's see what happened. In the beginning of 1848, the Fox family, John and Margaret, the parents, as well as two of their children, Margaret and Kate, moved into a small farmhouse in Hydesville, New York. It was a farmhouse that the prior owners had left because of strange noises that had been occurring during the nights. Starting in March of 1848, the rapping noises that had driven away the prior owner returned to the farmhouse. Despite their investigating possible sources of the phenomena, the family simply couldn't find anything that might be causing the noises. Kate, that's her on the right, found that if she clapped her hands a specific number of times, that the rapping sounds would return that same exact number of raps to her. And when she stopped her clapping, the sounds would stop, at least for a while. The mother decided to then test what the family concluded could only be a spirit or a ghost. She asked it to tap out the ages of her children, which it did, followed by a pause and then a an indication that the spirit knew that one of the children had died at age three. She then asked if it was a person that was responding to her and got no response. She then asked the spirit to give two taps if she was speaking with a ghost. The response was She then asked if the spirit might communicate with others besides the family and received an affirmative. Over the next several days, friends and neighbors all came to the house and were able to successfully communicate with the spirit. As it turns out, there was a 31-year-old man who had reportedly been murdered in the house long before the foxes had moved in. As rumor would have it, the body had been buried in the cellar. People in the 1800s had searched for the body, but no human remains had ever been found. Here we have the stone base of the house, for that's all that currently remains of the structure. But in the very early 1900s, 56 years after the foxes moved into the farmhouse, a wall in the cellar collapsed, revealing that there was a false outer wall. The photo shows the hollow between the wall that collapsed and the true wall. In that hollow, a human skeleton was found. Rumors abounded at the time that the skeleton had been planted there, for by that time the spiritualist movement had grown quite large and there were many advocates who wanted it to continue with vigor. Going back to the 1840s, the two sisters grew up and moved away from Hydesville. But strangely enough, the sounds and the ability to communicate with the spirits moved with them. The spiritualist movement, which was based on these events, grew rapidly in the United States. And in 1849, there occurred the first public meeting of spiritualists, and that was in Rochester, New York. The public was outraged at this, and in fact, the two sisters were nearly killed during this event. This led to multiple committees being put together to observe the sisters and try to find out how they were doing this. But time and time again, the committee reports came back. Genuine, true, true. Nobody could show 
that the sisters were doing anything other than truly communicating with the spirits. The two made a career of their spiritual abilities, and spiritualism grew rapidly in the United States. By 1855, there were greater than two million spiritualists. Ultimately, the sisters confessed that the entire communication with spirits was a huge hoax, that they had made it all up and that they had simply developed methods to make the noises that they had claimed were communications from the beyond. They used at least two methods. First, they had learned to make cracking noises that were actually quite loud with the joints of their toes, and they could do so imperceptibly so that observers couldn't tell. Margaret demonstrated this in 1888, publicly, on stage, in New York City, in front of a large audience. She said, and I quote, that I have been chiefly instrumental in perpetuating the fraud of spiritualism upon a too confiding public most of you doubtless know. The greatest sorrow in my life has been that this is true. And though it has come late in my day, I am now prepared to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. I am here tonight as one of the founders of spiritualism, to denounce it as an absolute falsehood from beginning to end, as the flimsiest of superstitions, the most wicked blasphemy known to the world. For her part, Kate simply said, I regard spiritualism as one of the greatest curses that the world has ever known. Secondly, at some point, the sisters also used a desk, as seen here, that was retrofitted with rods that could be used to make rapping noises. However, spiritualist proponents pointed out that the sisters' confessions were made in exchange for $1,500, quite a lot of money at that time, and that they needed the cash because they had fallen on hard times. Ultimately, Kate and Margaret both retracted their confessions. At least one of the two sisters fell deep into the hold of alcoholism. Though their reputations were ruined beyond repair, spiritualism nonetheless thrived in the United States. By this time, there were literally millions of people who claimed to be able to communicate with the spirits. It's with this background that spirit photography came into being. In 1861, spiritualism and photography met and shook hands in the persona of photographer William Howard Mumler. Mumler's story and his ability to photograph the spirits will be the topic of next week's video, so stay tuned. The story I just told is a very real and fascinating part of history. In the video description, I'm going to leave a link to some of the resources that I used in learning about the Fox Sisters and spiritualism in America in case anybody is interested in reading further. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video and I'll be sure to respond. I'm Howard and my channel is about introducing viewers to photographers who inspire, to discussing all sorts of photographic topics, and to enhancing creativity with Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. And if those topics sound interesting to you, I do hope you'll support the channel by clicking on that subscribe button below. And I hope you'll tune in next week when we continue the story with photographer William Howard Mumler. We'll see you next time.